Micro interactions are such a great way to create some visual flair on a website and just kind of give some more interactivity where there wasn't none before. So in this video, I'll show you how to create this effect using your buttons. First, I'll show you how to create a utility class that you can use on any button that you have on your website. Then we'll create some JavaScript that will handle the event listening. And then I'll show you how to use that event listening inside of the CSS to create the animation. I'm gonna be building out this animation on top of buttons that already exist. So I'm not gonna be building a button today. These are automatic CSS buttons. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly how I do it there, but this can be translated on any framework or your own buttons that you make. I just don't wanna be making buttons today. So let's build out this effect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna first choose my button and let's give this a class of something like hover dash dash circle. And this will house all of our CSS. So we'll go to style CSS and let's add an after element to this. So we're gonna go root and we're gonna go after and we are going to add the content of nothing. We don't want any content in it. We just want it to be a, an element that looks like a background color or something. Let's go ahead and give this a width of let's say 50 pixels. And I don't want to give this a height of 50 pixels. I just want to affect the width, but I do want it to be a perfect square. So let's do aspect ratio of one over one. And then let's give this a background color. So we'll go background color of red. Now we see it, All right, it needs to be circle. So we'll go border radius of 100 Vmax. And that's going to give us the rounded corners, the perfect rounded corners. So now we have a circle. I need this to be position absolute. So position absolute. And let's make sure that we set our button to relative. So just to confirm that we're going to go root and let's go position relative. Okay. There we go. Now I want to make this, I want to give this a top and left. So let's give this a top of zero and a left of 50%. We are going to be creating some JavaScript and that JavaScript is going to be updating our top and left positioning based on where our cursor enters the button and where it leaves. So I want this, this circle to expand from the direct center of where my button enters and leaves, right? Right now, it should be sitting direct center on the top middle, right? But it's over here. So what we need to do is a transform translate and move it left by 25 pixels and move it up by 25 pixels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform translate and we're gonna do negative 50%. That's gonna move it over to the left by 25 pixels because the width is set to 50 pixels. And we are going to do a top of negative 50 pixels. So now we can see it's directly center to the point where I want it to be, but there is some overflow issue. So let's go back to our root overflow and let's give this a hidden. Okay, there we go. Now we have our circle made. Now let's, let's change this width real quick. I'm gonna change it like something hundred pixels so we can see what's happening. Okay, it's over our text and we need to fix that. So let's set the Z index of this to like negative one, Z index, negative one. And now it's disappeared because it's technically behind the button. So what I wanna do is on the button, I wanna set the Z index of it to zero, kind of reset the base. And now we can see that it's behind our text. And I also wanna do one more thing because this is a link and because we're gonna be clicking on things, I don't want that circle to affect anything. So let's give a pointer events of none to make sure it doesn't affect any of our link clicking. Using what we already have, let's make a hover effect. Let's make it expand on width. So what we wanna do is let's set the width to zero by default. I don't want it to be anywhere, but on hover, I wanna change that width. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna go root and on hover, let's affect the after element. Also on root, and we're gonna go focus visible. Let's alter the after element. So let's do those two selectors there. And let's change the width on hover to something like 210%. Now this was just me playing with it and fine tuning, but that will ensure it covers the full width of the button. Our width of our button might change depending on text and it might be 100%, but our height really won't change all that much. So that's why we're targeting width versus height. So change the width to 210% on hover. Now let's add a transition to that. So let's go to our base root up here and go transition width of 0 0.5 seconds and we'll go ease, uh, ease out. Okay, now we have an, a slight animation. Now, because I am building this on top of a button that already exists, we can see that when we hover, there's a little bit of yellow, the background changes. Oh, I have to add a class here. So let's add the same class here, hover dash dash circle. 
we can see the background changes, the background color. Well, I don't want the background color to change. I want the circle to bring in the background color. So what we need to do is basically reset the hover background color on this button. And by that, we're gonna do a, let's go back to this one and let's go hover circle. There we go. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that to me, but we're gonna go root. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna select our button and this could be dot button primary or dot button secondary or whatever classes you're using. But for my use case, I wanna select any button that has the class, I'm gonna go star equals, if it has button dash dash in the class name, I want to affect it. And on hover, I want to keep the exact same background color on the button itself. And so I'm gonna go background color and automatic CSFs gives me a really amazing variable that all buttons use. So it's it's var button background. They all use the exact same variable for the background. So I can keep it at the base. I can add this to any, any ACSS button and the background color will not change on hover. It's gonna to stay to what the default setting is and now I can change um, colors in automatic CSS. I don't have to change it per button. So, okay, that's changed. The button is color is not changing on hover. We can see that. But now I want to change the circle color based on another variable that automatic CSS gives us. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our after element and on our background color, which is now red, I'm gonna change this to var button background hover. And so now I can change the background color from automatic CSS, it's gonna inherit that color. Now, if you are working with any type of borders, I do recommend, especially with automatic CSS, I do recommend using this overwrite or a reset on our uh, roots or dynamic selector with the button selector. I want to set a border color of var button background hover. So let's change it to the background hover so it'll be the exact same color as our circle just in case it's not. And we'll set this to important. That way, if I set the, the color to something else, if I have hover circle applied, it's going to automatically use the exact same border color as my circle, just so there's no weird looking things happening. So I recommend doing that if you are using automatic CSS. All right, now that we have our CSS set up, let's build out the JavaScript that's gonna handle the positioning of the mouse and everything like that. So I'm gonna to go to WP Box. You can use bricks if you want to, but I'm gonna be building out in here and I'm gonna add a new one. Let's go hover button circle and this will be JavaScript and this will be front end footer. Okay, now first thing I wanna do is I wanna get all of the buttons on my page that have the class of hover, um, hover circle. So we're going to create a new variable. So it's gonna be a constant, it will not change, of buttons. And this is gonna equal document dot query selector all. So get all, we'll do parentheses, close that off, and we'll get the dot hover circle. So anything that has that class, we're going to pull that in basically into a node. I wanna pull each button separately. So each button has its own animation. So we're gonna go call the variable we just made buttons dot for each. So for each one, we're gonna call each one a button. And on each button, we're going to run a nameless function. So equals arrow brackets. Now inside this, we're gonna call a new variable and this is gonna be constant. You can call this whatever you want, but I'm gonna do button mouse position. And this is gonna be equal to an event. So when an event happens, Let's run a function, okay. So we want to, uh, on the event handling, I want to get the information of where my mouse is. And so we're gonna go uh, const equals, I'm sorry, const rect equals, we're gonna get the button dot get bounding client rect. So it's gonna get the information of like the size of the button. It's gonna pull that information. But what I need to do is I need to get the X and Y axis. So we're gonna go const X equals E, so the event dot client X. So it's getting my, where my mouse is on my viewport. And we're gonna basically get inside 
of my rectangle and we're going to get the left positioning. So that's going to be my x axis. Now we're going to do the opposite. So const y is equal to the basically event information. Get my client y. So where's my y positioning on my viewport? But get inside of my rectangle top. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, use the x and y axis inside of a CSS variable, and we're going to set that on the element itself. But we have a, a couple different scenarios. We have one where when the mouse enters, I want to do one uh, one type of CSS variable, and when the mouse leaves, I want another. So what we're going to say is if e dot type, so if my event dot type is equal to we'll do um, parentheses here, mouse enter, okay, inside of that, I want to do a, do a button dot style dot set property. We'll close that off. And the property we're going to be setting is mouse enter X. Okay. And I want this to be, we're going to use the grave accent. If you don't know what grave accent is, look that up. It's like next to your squiggly on your keyboard. Do a grave accent. We're going to pull that X. So my, my variable up here. So we're going to pull that in like this. There's my X and we're going to set that to pixel. Now I want to do the same thing. So we're going to copy and paste this. I want to do mouse enter Y with my Y uh, variable. So now I have those set up, but else if, so if it's a mouse enter, it's going to set those else if, and we'll parentheses, let's close that off down there. Else if E dot type is equal to mouse leave. Okay, what do I want it to do? Well, I want it to do the same thing, basically, but I want it to set the mouse leave X and mouse leave Y. Now, all that I need to do is right below the second one down here, I basically just need to set um, the event listeners. So we're going to say on the button, I want to add add event listener so that on mouse enter, oops, in here, on mouse enter, button mouse position. So on mouse enter, I want it to call upon this, basically a function here. It's going to pull the event and it's going to get some of this information and get my X and Y axis for my mouse enter. And then it's going to output the variables. Well, let's do one more. Let's copy and paste this. Okay. On mouse leave, I want it to run button mouse position again, and it's going to do mouse leave instead. So let's save this and let's enable. Okay. So let's check. I'm going to inspect this element. Okay. Now we can see that the mouse enter is being set and the mouse leave is being set. Okay. On leave, we can see leave is updating on enter, enter is updating. Okay. So we're all good there. Now I want to put these to use inside of my CSS. All right, so in our CSS, let's change our top and left. So our, our base after needs to have a top of bar mouse leave Y. So by default, when we leave it, I want it to return to that leaving position, that leaving Y. And on left, we're going to do a var mouse leave X. Okay, so that's going to be by default, it's not going to show um, where it starts from, that's totally okay. Um, but on hover, what I want to do is we're going to say top, top of bar mouse enter X, Y, sorry. So when we enter it, so on hover, when we're entering it, I want it to change its top position based on the Y axis of where we're at. And then I want it to change the left of bar mouse enter X. Okay. So on hover, it's going to find where my, let's save this and let's see what's happening here. Okay. So now look at that. Now it's working on both of my buttons where I leave the mouse. So on hover, we're getting the mouse enter position at Y and X, and we're setting that. And then when we leave, we're basically setting it back to default. So the leave Y and X on the top and left. That's how we're setting up that transition. Now, in order to create some, some smoothing effects here, I do want to change a few things. So let's kind of preview this. 
what happens if I kind of like go back and forth? Well, the position is changing just ever so slightly. And it looks like it just immediately like bolts over. I want to create a little bit of a transition here. So we have transition width, but let's do transition. Let's do like a transition of top. Oops, my bad. Don't type transition in here again. We're going to do a transition of top of 0 0.1 seconds. And we'll just do ease. And then we'll do a left of 0 0.1 second ease. So that there, there's just a little bit of smoothness when it when somebody moves quickly across this the button wants to like kind of just quickly smoothly move over to the next position that it's supposed to be at instead of it just jumping from like oh i'm up here oh no i'm up there it'll kind of just smoothly drag over to that new position now one little smoothing thing like when i when i leave i want it to kind of ease the other way out so what i'm going to do here is on hover i'm going to set the transition of my width to 0 0.5 seconds ease in whereas compared to my base it's ease out we're going to ease in so it's just the opposite effect it's like playing in reverse basically okay and now i think we are a lot better and there you go now you have an effect on your website that's going to boost the interactivity and just give it a little bit more flair if you found this helpful please give it a like leave a comment let me know you appreciate it i can always make more of these types of videos i do have another video you might find interesting it'll be in the description down below on how to create a hover card effect so go over to that video check it out and again i'll see you guys in the next video